Alright guys, we're here with our second upload of the day and a little different video than you guys are used to say, used to seeing, I'm sorry. The video we have today is 10 simple tips and tricks to make you a better NBA 2K19 My Team player. So with that said, let's hop right into tip number one. Alright guys, the first simple tip or trick you can learn is how to do a fake pass. Driving up the court with Carmelo Anthony. To do a fake pass, all you have to do is just hit triangle and circle at the same time. Now you might think, why would you use a fake pass? Well, a fake pass can both fool the computer and a fake pass will prevent you from being doubled while the opponents are closing in on a double team. You will not get that dumb animation where you suddenly just lose the ball if you keep fake passing. All right, guys, the second simple tip is to how to sham god. So a sham god, I'm dribbling the ball up the court in my right hand. I push the right stick to my right and then immediately back to my left. Just to be clear, you have to push it in the direction of which you already have the ball in. So if you're dribbling in the right, flick it to your right and then flick it immediately back to your left. Sham God is mainly just looks cool, but it also can break ankles. Alright guys, tip number three is how to do a dribble handoff. So to do a dribble handoff, a lot of times you want to be in the post with L2, then all you do is hold circle, and the nearest player will come grab it. Dribble handoff can be useful against off ball, because oftentimes the defender gets caught running into you and you get an open lane to the hoop. And that's why a, a dribble handoff is a useful tool in NBA 2K19 my team. Alright guys, trick number four is how to call a pick and roll or pick and pop to a specific player. To do this, click out one or left button and then hold the and then hold the position. Oh, you gotta be past half court and triple threat. Then hold the position of the player you want and then tap R1 to change it to pick and fade. Right. Running a pick and roll or a pick and pop to a specific player can be helpful on unlimited if you want to expose a certain matchup or run a guard to guard pick and roll or a big guard or a big to guard pick and roll or if you just want to get a player out of the paint. Like if I want to run one to Giannis and then a pick and fade. Here we go. It's much more useful and unlimited as you have four different players you can call four screens from. Alright guys, trick number five is how to call for a backdoor cut. So if an opponent is off-balling and overplaying your pass, all you do is dribble towards them and hold triangle to throw a backdoor cut. Trick number six, the best way to beat off-ball is to take your best shooter, go stand closest to your biggest player, and hold L1 to call for a pick and roll. Step over the screen, and then hit a three-pointer. If your opponent overplays it, just fake one way, and then go right around them and dunk it. All right, guys. Tip number seven is to play to your player's strengths. As you can see here, I have Wilt Chamberlain, Carmelo Anthony, and Giannis. So if I need a three, I'm gonna be one. I'm gonna want to shoot that with Carmelo Anthony. If I need to get a dunk and go to the hoop, I'm going to want to use Giannis. If I'm trying to post up, I'm going to use Wilt Chamberlain. You don't want to play outside of what your players can do. A lot of people like to try to shoot threes with every player on their team and not every player is capable of it. See, I can't break down Tracy McGrady with Wilt Chamberlain. But if I get the ball to Mello, but if I get the ball to Mello, who is Hall of Fame ankle breaker, I can blow right by Kyle Lowry and get a shot at the hoop. Alright guys, tip number eight is knowing when to sell and when to buy players. The best time to buy players when they're at their cheapest is when new content comes out. Then players, lots of people will be on the game and lots of people will be pulling packs and all the cards in the auction house will go down in value. This is the best time to buy cards because later the card value will slowly go back up. So on content days such as Monday, uh, Friday, 
and sometimes Tuesday or Thursday, that's when the market is, market is at its lowest and when you should buy cards. Vice versa, you should try to sell cards in days when there isn't content. The best day to sell cards is typically Sunday, but Wednesday and Saturday also aren't bad. Alright guys, tip number 9 is how to snipe. And say so I'm just going to take a look at the diamonds filter. Uh, the auction house is really messed up right now. As you can see, there's a problem communicating. But we'll just take a look and see that the cheapest diamond is 20... Okay, this is glitching out. The cheapest diamond is 3100 So say we put our maximum buyout at 2800 and then we want to put our maximum bid up to 100000 So what we do is we drop our maximum bid down 50 and that will help refresh the auction house when it isn't glitching out like it is now. This will help you refresh the auction house so you can see new cards sooner and you can buy them for much less than their value, which means you can flip them for a profit or snipe them from the auction house to help you make MT. Okay guys, and the 10th and final tip is the best way to make tokens. As you can see, I have all of the NBA, all of the heat check, and all of the throwback locked in. These sets are an easy way to make tokens. As you can see, you get 15 for the throwbacks and 25 for the heat checks and 25 or 20 I believe for the current NBA. The current NBA are the cheapest and easiest collections to lock in for a ton of tokens. Also, there's these jersey collections which are now super cheap. The earned jerseys for only 8 gold jerseys give you 20 tokens. Other way to earn tokens are multiplayer challenges uh, a bit when they load. These are typically updated every week and they either have four or six or sometimes eight tokens that you can win for doing usually a shortened game, sometimes with a little spin on them. As you can see here, I've done all of them. Also, there sometimes will be moments challenges. These challenges can sometimes be up to 20 or 25 tokens and you're just playing against the CPU. They're super easy to beat. They just take a little bit of time and you can get a bunch of tokens from them. I've done all five of them. There's a couple recently. I believe these are each 20 apiece. Actually, this one's for MT. This one is the Raptors first title is 20 tokens. All you have to do is just beat the Raptors in a five minute quarter game. Two other good ways are triple threat online and triple threat offline. Triple threat offline, although boring, is an easy and consistent way to get tokens. As if you beat the computer five times in triple threat, you get, I think it's I want to say five tokens on the first time through for each division through the first six boards and then once you get to board seven it is six tokens each time you beat through the board of I believe six and yep no five you play five computer teams and if you beat all five teams you get six tokens it's super boring but it's a super fast and easy way to make tokens Triple Threat Online is a much less consistent and more difficult way to make tokens, but you have the potential to get much more in shorter periods of time. There's now 25 and 15 token spots, along with much more common 1, 3, 5, and 10 token spots, and these allow you to make tokens super, super fast. Guys, and that's going to wrap up the video for today. I hope you enjoyed these simple tips and tricks to make you a better My Team player. If you have any other question, if you have any questions about any of these tips, or any questions in general about my team, feel free to ask in the comments below. And that's gonna be the video for today. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of this video and other videos you would like to see.